Hey everybody, good afternoon. Hope you're having a good Monday. Let's talk offensive line. Let's talk the Seahawks offensive line because they probably just played their best game of the season against the Chargers. Maybe. I don't know if it actually is, but it, it feels like it, right? It feels like the offensive line really really brought something special to the field against LA. It's it's a road game. The refs were kind of against you. You're playing one of the best defensive players in the league so far this year in Khalil Mack. And you hold up great. And this has got to be one of the most exciting things because offensive line play has been... It's been a struggle at many points over the last decade, right? We've definitely had some really bad offensive lines here. We've had some offensive lines that were pretty good but not great. We've had some offensive lines that we weren't really sure about. We've had some offensive lines that have been held together with older players that we knew were not going to last that much longer in the NFL. But not so right now. This is an offensive line that is young. This is an offensive line that has upside, has potential. And if you add that to the fact that they're playing well right now, you couldn't ask for much better. So let, let's take a look at some of these numbers here from uh, Hawk Blogger, well, PFF numbers. But Hawk Blogger tweeted this out uh, earlier this morning. Pass block grades. So these are just your pass block grades against the Chargers. So the run block grades, not included here. And we ran for over 200 yards on the Chargers. So the run blocking, it couldn't have been terrible, right? I know Ken Walker's doing a lot of positive work out there to make that 200-yard uh, game happen. But... I think, um, I think we all understand that they're probably doing fine as run blockers overall just because of the production. It's hard to not be playing at least decently if you're going to rush for 200 yards in a game. So just pass blocking, okay? You've got rookie tackles, including a 21-year-old in Charles Cross, both playing at really good levels, 72 and 73 grades from this game, going up against Khalil Mack, one of the early dark horse candidates for Defensive Player of the Year, a guy who had been completely dominant going into that game. More on him in a second. Um, Damian Lewis playing out of position and Phil Haynes off the bench for Gabe Jackson, both turning in very good performances as pass protectors. And even Austin Blythe. Austin Blythe had a really good game at center pass protecting. Obviously, there are some issues with him in run blocking, just like there are with some of these other guys as well, a little bit, but... The run, the, the pass blocking has been very solid. And look, here is, here's the thing with some of the pieces on this offensive line, like, like Charles Cross specifically, okay? Like I said, he's 21 years old. When we went into this season, I said, if Charles Cross could even come close to what we got from Dwayne Brown last year, and I know Dwayne Brown was not elite last year, Dwayne Brown had problems, especially early in the season. He gave up some it was on Wilson's head, and I think we all know that, especially now. But he was still a good player. And I said that if 21-year-old Charles Cross comes in here and plays even close to as good as Dwayne Brown, that is a tremendous win. Because rookies at left tackle going up against these elite rushers, which he is pretty much every week, right? Every week he's got a new tough challenge to deal with. You have Bradley Chubb. Uh, this week it was Khalil Mack. Sometimes he's got to go up against guys like uh, Bosa. Sometimes he's got to go up against guys like Watt. He's got difficult challenges pretty much every week. Aiden Hutchinson. And as this year goes on, you're going to see him against other elite competition as well. You combine that with his experience. You combine that with his age. If you can get a season that is even close to what Dwayne Brown gave you last year, which was above average, you're, you're feeling really good about that. And so far, he's not at the Dwayne Brown level, but he's close. So we are absolutely on the right track with him, and I want to make that abundantly clear. Um, I think Cross's overall PFF grade right now is a 60. His pass protection has been above average. His run blocking they grade is below average, which I actually don't totally agree with. I, I think Cross's run blocking has been mostly fine. But either way, you're looking at a guy who is probably just a notch below where Dwayne Brown was last year as a longtime NFL veteran. And this guy's 21. So 
great stuff there. And Abe Lucas. Abe Lucas. Now, he's 23, I believe, almost 24. So it's a little bit different with him, but he's still a rookie. He's still a guy who some people questioned going into the NFL because he played in that um, that Mike Leach offense for a good part of his college career. Some people thought he wasn't going to be able to run block. Eh, he can run block. And he can also pass protect as well. He was definitely part of the reason why Khalil Mack didn't do all that much. He was He's definitely part of the reason why Geno has generally stayed upright most of this season. Um, the thing to remember is um, in that Chargers game, Geno got sacked twice, both on third down. Uh, one sack was on Kerhan, who came in as a replacement for Phil Haynes when Phil Haynes got concussed. And Jake Kerhan's not a guard. So when you get him in passing situations as a guard, he's going to give up stuff. It's not really his fault. That's not his position. The other sack was on Haynes, but it was kind of a weird play. So I'm not even really putting that on him. If you go back and look at the Phil Haynes sack that he gave up, it was a thing where, like, Haynes was kind of moved into his own player and kind of ran into his own guy, and the guy got around him because of that. I don't think it was necessarily a bad rep from Haynes on the sack he gave up, so I'm not even really tripping on that. And by the way, even with that sack he gave up, his pass block grade is 86. Damien Lewis, kind of an interesting thing is going on here. It seems like he's doing a pretty good job pass protecting, but his run blocking has taken a big step back. Um, I don't know if that's just because he's playing out of position, but overall he's been a approximate through seven games. Not that he's played all seven games, but in the games that he's played, he's been like league average. And it seems like his pass protection is somehow better than his run blocking, which is not the Damian Lewis that I know. Uh, I don't terribly mind it, but I feel like he could be really good at both if you put him at right guard. So hopefully that happens at some point, but... He's playing better. I think there were a couple of mishaps in run blocking from him yesterday, but hey, protecting the protecting the goods at quarterback, that's a very important thing for a left guard to do. So hey, if he can be at least tolerable there, that's going to help the rest of this season. And Blythe, um, yeah, he's, he's had a rough season at times this year. Um, I think he's been put in some bad situations. I, I think he probably got docked a little bit for the penalty as well in his grade in yesterday's game, which was garbage. The the false start that I, I don't I don't know what the heck that was about, but um this this is a great pass blocking offensive line. And let's go beyond just the PFF grades here real quick. Seth Walder, ESPN, using the uh pass block win rate stat, has Abe Lucas in the twenty fifth percentile among all qualifying tackles. Out of 64, in terms of pass block win rate, Lucas ranks 14th, and Cross ranks 22nd, and Cross is the one who typically draws those tough matchups, when you think about it so far this year, I think. So, when you're talking about two rookies who are better than average playing tackle in the NFL, you're doing something really, really good. And Lucas is better than above average, according to most of these metrics. He's good. He's genuinely good. He's approaching very good in some of these areas. Um, he's gotten docked for a couple penalties that I don't think were leg good calls as well. So we've got something really special brewing on this line. I gave the Lucas pick an A+, plus when we did it, because I couldn't believe he was available there. And now that we're a handful of games into his career it becomes even more unbelievable that he was still there in the third round. Um, last thing I want to talk about real quick is hammering on this Khalil Mack thing so we can all understand exactly how impressive that game was for this offensive line. Khalil Mack came into the game with a PFF grade of around 88, one of the best defensive players in the league, the best defensive player on the Chargers, um, candidate for defensive player of the year, Maybe even comeback player of the year. I don't know because he didn't do a ton in Chicago. Probably a distant, distant third at best behind guys like Saquon and Geno. But Khalil Mack against the Seahawks kind of did nothing except for cover a fumble. 47.8 grade, by far the worst of his year. He had one QB pressure in that game. First time all year he's had less than three. No sacks. And he got punked by Kenneth Walker III as well. Uh, cool moment, by the way, in that game. 
Walker, not afraid of anything, apparently. So you got you, you got to appreciate having that mentality in a player so young. And there's no doubt who got the last laugh there. So holding Khalil Mack, who, by the way, that's Charles Cross's weakness, right? Like like a bull rusher like Khalil Mack, that's what Cross is probably going to struggle against, and he didn't. And not only is this a huge vote of confidence for the players, you also got to give it up to the staff because I said going into this game, okay, you don't have to worry about Bosa. You can throw extra stuff at Mac to make sure you neutralize him. And he was neutralized. Like these numbers speak for themselves. He was basically invisible out there. He recovered a fumble that never should have happened. He didn't force the fumble. He just jumped on a fumble. And beyond that, he could have uh, taken the day off and he really wouldn't have noticed too much. So, we are headed towards a really nice place right now. I know that Geno's doing a good job helping the offensive line out for the most part. That makes them look better than they, um, better than their actual pure performance. But we have an offensive line here that is on the right track. I, it's young too. Like Damian Lewis still has another year on his rookie deal after this one. Cross and Lucas, of course, they're rookies. Phil Haynes, he's been around for a while. He's not on his rookie deal anymore. But he's not a high-profile player. He's somebody who you could probably keep around reasonably priced. Honestly, at this point, if he's going to play the way he played against the Chargers, which overall I thought he played a great game, um, you might want to extend him now and just keep him around knowing that at the minimum you have a good depth player on, for the interior offensive line and maybe you even have a starter. So things are happening with this offensive line, people. It looks better than it's been in a while. And it's time to get excited because the a lot of these guys are not going anywhere anytime soon. And I believe they can get even better. See you guys later. Go Hawks.